Good morning, all, and welcome to Calvar's Corner for this special live stream for the Atlantean University. I am Lord Calvar de Guyler, painting the Meridian Cross, painting the Argent Comet, painting the Compostela and Reaper, coming to you live from the Barony of the Osprey on the southern coast of Meridies. Uh, so, first of all, I'd like to welcome all of my, uh, my the students, I guess, from the Atlantean University, and want to thank the staff of the Atlantean U for allowing me to do this. Uh, it's always fun getting to teach for other for the kingdoms and. We can sort of spread, spread what we do here in Meridies out to others and uh, just uh, bring new people into the channel here. So for those first timers, welcome. Uh, Calvary's Corner is a, a slew of information uh, about various subjects across the uh, across the known world in the SCA. So I uh, hope you're uh, hope you enjoy your stay here. Uh, so we, I see a lot of people in the comments and thank you all for doing that. Yes. So please, uh, while you're while you're coming in, sort of filtering in here, uh, say hello over in the comments. Let me know you're watching. Um, a little bit of business for Atlantean U specifically. Uh, if you're watching this later, this won't apply to you. But uh, if you are watching for Atlantean University, please make sure uh, I will not be taking attendance during this because I can't really. Um, make sure you go back out to the Atlantean U site and uh, sign in uh, or check in in the class or whatever it is on that. Make sure you get credit. Uh, if you're watching this and you're not from the Atlantean University and you want to get credit for this, uh, you can reach out to me via my Facebook, Calvary's Corner, uh, or the uh, YouTube uh, comment there, and I'll make sure you get credit for the Royal University of Meridies. So. All right, now that's being done, uh, let's jump into today's course. Um, so today's class is something that uh, was one of two I'm teaching today. Uh, if, you're, if you're not signed up for the second one and you want to watch it, you can follow it in the same channel. Um, we're going to be discussing the reserved, restricted, and conventional heraldry. Uh, now, by way of a little bit of it, like, let's do a little introduction uh, to, to who I am, and then we'll do a civil war, uh, sort of going to what the class is going to be about. As I said, I'm Lord Calbarger um, from the Barony of the Osprey in Meridies. Uh, so that's it. In, are you familiar with, with the geography of that? Uh, I'm, I'm in that little portion of Meridies that's between Glenalbin and Tromeris down on the coast. Uh, I'm currently the Lantern Herald for the kingdom, uh, which means, uh, so my job is, is education for, for Meridies, uh, specifically heraldic education. Uh, also in that serves the Dean of Heraldic Studies for the Royal University of Meridies. So this is sort of a, a, a interesting for me to get to teach for another uh, university while serving as Dean. So I'm sort of a, a visiting professor, as it were. Um, I also hold a, a, a lecture degree from that university as well. So, uh, so yeah, enough about me. Um, so this class is really about uh, a single page within the SCA College of Arms. So, so if you go to the SCA Incorporated College of Arms uh, page uh, on the website, there is a glossary page uh, that starts out with a whole bunch of uh, just words, what they mean, what a badge means, what a device means, which we'll be covering later, but also just sort of some of the, the phrases we use commonly in heraldry. In that, there is also a couple of tables that are super important that I don't think I knew existed I knew they were around, but I never knew they were all in one spot. And I happened to have come across them one day, and I was like, oh, yeah, we should teach class about this, because it's the thing that I think people talk about a lot that don't really know where the innovation comes from. Uh, and those tables are the reserved regalia. Let me get the right page here. There we go. Reserved regalia, reserved charges, restricted charges, and then conventional or proper colorings. Now... First of all, let me say this, there are no regalia or holy police that exist. People may think they're th that thing, they may they may act like they are re regalia police, um, but th nobody's gonna come and, and steal your banner from your wall uh, or tell you you can't paint that on your shield. Now, as heralds uh, in, in, our, in our proper duties, we may tell you you shouldn't do that, or you might not want to. Um, generally, the way I try to approach that is that, hey, it's not proper to do this, you should do this. Uh, I always try to give it another option. Um, realistically, the thing with heraldry when we're looking at these sort of uh, restricted and reserved and sort of conventional ways of doing things is there is a set of rules. There are, there are sort of set of standards that we follow. Uh, and we do that just to maintain some semblance of normalcy throughout the system. Now, the problem we have with that, and this is sort of a, a separate topic, is a lot of our heraldry rules are based on European heraldry. This gets very, very difficult when we start looking at, at extra European personas, uh, anything from, from you know, Japan or the, the Asia continent, uh, or even early period, looking at like Norse, 
uh, or Mongols, things like that, who didn't use heraldry in a conventional manner. Uh, it, it's very difficult. See, sometimes those roles have to get bent or adjusted a, a smidgen to make those personas work. Uh, and that's some things I really like to do uh, for, for clients that I work with is to help them find ways to adjust their heraldry. But that's another topic. Regardless, if anybody ever walks up to you and tells you, you can't do that, go, okay, thank you, my lord, and, and, and walk on and, and just understand that they're not actually the police. All right. So, table one, first on the docket, is the reserved regalia. Now, when I say reserved regalia, I'm talking about things that by law, by rule within society, is regalia, so things you wear. So hats, you know, hats, jewelry, things that you wear um, that denote some rank. Now, I am talking about this from a society level and what's what is on the Society Herald's rule book, right? Your kingdom may vary. Your mileage may vary locally. Um, so to make sure you check your local laws, your local customs as what matters. Now, this is also the what is rule, not what is tradition. There are lots of traditions within society of things you should and shouldn't do that are not actually reserved, but by tradition have become custom. So uh, be careful with that, right? Uh, but understand this, these are the ones that are reserved on a society level. All right. So it's actually a surprisingly short list. Um, and, I, and I've got it broken down into uh, into sort of topics here. So first we're going to talk about royal peers. So is anybody who has served as a crown or coronet, uh, so king, queen, prince, princess, the, there are three things that are restricted for them. Uh, and the last one's sort of weird and we'll kind of I'll dig into it a little bit. So a coronet embattled. Uh, which is pictured to the left there. This is anything that looks like a castle top uh, on, on, on a hat. So it's a metal hat uh, that is that has a castle top on it. Uh, anything that is embattled denotes a county, uh, a royal player holding a county. Um, a coronet with strawberry leaves. Now this gets really weird because strawberry leaves are, are not necessarily easy to denote. So be careful if you put any sort of leaves or leaf motifs like this, uh, the one on your right here, on a coronet. Um, and that is restricted to royal peers holding a duchy. Now, last but not least, and I think the funny part about this is a crown or coronet. So any crown or coronet is restricted to royalty, which is somebody's currently sitting as a, a, a royal, royal peers, so a count, duke, viscount, so on and so forth, and any court or landed baronages. Um, so if you're not one of those four things, you should not have a crown or coronet on. The definition of crown and coronet is maybe the problem. Um, and let me see, actually, let me grab that. See if there's a definition of coronet in the glossary. And there actually is not. So, okay, so there we go. So, so there's not a crown or coronet definition on the heraldic site. Um, there are, of course, some mentions of crowns and coronets, but not a definition of one. So, if you're looking at this, um, you know, I think we, we all can sort of agree or sort of look at when we look at our kings and queens, our prince and princesses, and, and our, of course, our, of course our, our territorial baronages, that what they're wearing is obviously a crown, obviously a coronet, obviously denoting some station. Um, make sure if you're wearing a hat and you're outside of that group that, you, that your, your headgear your circlet or whatnot does not make you look like one of those things. Um, this is a really personal opinion thing, and, it, and there's a, some some really gray area, especially as you get into like the GOA level circlets, or even some of the kingdoms where where there we don't have that sort of regalia um, for lords and and, and uh, honorable lords. Be careful, right? This this is all about res sort of respecting those stations, respecting the the heraldic guidelines within those stations, um, but. You know, again, follow your kingdom's customs and traditions on that. Now, moving out into the bestowed peerages, uh, so the non-royal peers, looking at the order of pelican first. Uh, now, some of this is uh, not regularly specific, uh, or this is all regularly specific, but two of them are, are also charges, so it gets a little weird, but it's any use of these things. So, 
a cap of maintenance, uh, ghouls, so red, trimmed in ermine. So that's the picture to your left there. Now there's also a variation of that cap maintenance that is trimmed uh, with gouts, uh, black gouts or black teardrops essentially, or, or uh, black droplets. Um, I, I've, I've never seen one of those personally. I've usually seen the ones with the ermine trim on them. Uh, but the cap maintenance in both ways is restricted to the Order of the Pelican. Um, so, but it's only a red cap maintenance, not a blue or a green or a gold or any other color. It has to be red with white trim with black things on it. So it's either black spots, ermine spots, or black uh, teardrops. Um, so uh, that's, you know, again, be careful with that. Um, so now, also within that restricted regalia is a pelican in its piety, uh, which is again the picture left, or a pelican folding itself, which is the proper word for uh, the pelican wounding itself. So technically, the pelican wounding itself and the I'm sorry, and you're absolutely correct. I, I was going to correct myself on that. The guy did saying are red droplets, not black droplets. You're correct. Um, I read that afterwards. Like, wait a second, I said that wrong. So yes, black herbivore spots or red droplets. Two things to watch out for. Thank you for that. Um, so the pelican its piety is uh, con consists of the pelican wounding itself with its young, uh, and then the pelican vaulting itself is just the pelican wounding itself. Um, both of those are restricted, so you'll so you'll sometimes see it with with or without its young. Um, generally, you'll see the ones with the, the nest and the young beneath it, but depending on what you're looking at. But both of those are restricted, both in regalia and in charges. So any necklace, any trim work, anything you would be wearing is restricted to someone of the order of the pelican. Now, that does not mean all pelicans are reserved. So just a regular pelican, a pelican walking around, a pelican rampant, pelican flying, is not restricted. This is where those sort of traditions things come in. If somebody sees you wearing a pelican, they might assume something, even if it's not the actual pelican. So again, be wary of that. All right, shifting on to the order of the chivalry. There are three pieces of, of regalia, uh, one of which is a little controversial in some kingdoms, depending on where you are. Uh, Merdi is actually one of them. Uh, so a white baldric, uh, which is the picture to the left there. So it's a white uh, sash or belt that, is, that goes from shoulder to hip. Uh, it's restricted to the Masters of Arms, uh, which is the non-fealty bearing chivalry. Uh, a white belt, uh, picture to, your, to, the, to the right, uh, or yeah, the right there, uh, restricted to knights uh, or members of the Order of the Chivalry who do swear fealty. And then a circular chain. Uh, so this is a circular, unbroken chain of any color. So one of the things it talks about in the chart, uh, there is a special uh, like little section in the chart that says, if the color or tincture is left off of the charge or regalia, then it's all colors or all tinctures. So technically, any unbroken circular chain is reserved to the knighthood. Traditionally, uh, most knights wear gold or silver. Um, most, I, and a lot of Tiramiri really is wear gold chains. Uh, that, that has become the more common chain for knights to wear is gold chains. We're seeing a lot of chains here in the last few, a couple of years that are rainbow or black um, that for, for various reasons, um, and in Meridiers, we have some tradition of squires wearing silver chains as showing fealty to their knight, doing fealty to the crown. Technically, it's actually against the, uh, the heraldic rules for, for society on a society level. But again, your 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 local custom tradition will vary. Uh, I do want to point out that it's hard to see on the hand. I am not wearing an unbroken chain. This is a broken chain. Uh, so you can see that there is a, a link missing and that it is connected by my, my, uh, my mule near. Uh, so that is not a singular circular chain. Um, that's why I have it that way, so that I can both have the, the chain feeling, uh, but also keep it to where it's not breaking the rules. Uh, I try to be a good herald. Uh, of course, I'd like to uh, actually I also thank uh, Master Lash and uh, Graffle Work for uh, letting me steal their pictures. I don't know if they know I stole their pictures, but I stole their pictures. They're, they're both good friends of mine, so hope they don't mind that I use them as my demo dollies for this. All right. Um, now... I want to be uh, correct. So yeah, so that and that's another way to show. That, so I was my thing. If it has a dangly on it, it is not considered. It's not a regalia. So that's a that makes it an adorned chain. 
Uh, I make the note of that uh, because nowhere in any of the descriptions do you see adorned or unadorned chain. But that's what we talk about a lot when we're discussing the idea of the chain is that it has to be an unadorned chain. But nobody defines that anywhere. Uh, so I try to make that distinction of that. So yeah, but if it has anything dangling off of it, then it's not a chain per what we're, so what we all sort of agreed that, that what that means. So thank you for that. Um, all right. Now, uh, I group these next into uh, into a set, uh, I don't, not to be uh, mean to the, to the Order of Defense, Laurels or Roses. They just have less regalia to worry about, so I, I put them on one slide. So, uh, for the Order of Defense, uh, in the middle there, Baron Wistrick uh, is wearing a, a white livery collar. Uh, so, this is anything that is a white collar, um, and they all usually bears their, uh, their badge at the bottom. Uh, I've seen leather. I've seen cloth. I've seen... Um, uh, do, 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 like metal ones. I've seen like metallic ones. Um, so those are so your mileage may vary there. Uh, Wishrick's here is clothing. This is one he fights in usually, so it's a little less uh, uh, fancy, I guess. Uh, and yes, Wishrick, uh, Baron Wishrick is such a ham. Uh, I agree. I, I love me Wishrick. Uh, he is he is he is my uh, my home away from home Baron. Um, he is a great guy. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so the white livery collars here, fairly simple. Anything that is a white collar um, is, is restricted to the members of the Order of Defense. Now, the Laurel Wreath and Wreath of Roses. And these two, and this, this is where it gets a little weird when you're looking at regalia, um, because you don't often see people wearing a wreath of roses as regalia. Generally, you'll see, you know, roses as trim or roses on uh, some sort of like a, a painting or, or a banner or whatnot. Um, now you do see the laurels wearing wearing wreaths uh, on their their laurel cloak or as a headgear. Um, so, and again, just like we're talking about the strawberry leaves, there are a bunch of of wreath things that don't look like laurel or aren't laurel wreaths by definition. You know, they're because they're actually bamboo leaves or they're actually uh, acanthus leaves or they're uh, some sort of vine, but. They a lot of the, like they look like laurel wreaths, so please be careful with that. It, it's one of the things that technically allowed, but it looks presumptive. Um, and I've had that conversation a lot with people when we're when we're designing heraldry. I'm like, yes, technically you can do that, but it, it you're you're borderlining presumptive where you can do it, but you're going to have a lot of conversations about this, right? Um, we people talk about it a lot when they're talking about Well, what is the first time it wears a white belt and they don't know any better? You're right. It's going to happen. People are going to wear a white belt because they bought it at the Ren Fair and didn't know when they showed up the event what that meant. Um, sure, we had that conversation. We move on. Um, when we're looking at, you know, like designing heraldry, you want to be a little more careful since that's something you're sort of committing to. All right, we had a question about what about collars and maintenance? Uh, collars and maintenance are not restricted on a society level, at least not from these tables, right? So this is this is reserved regalia on a sort of a peerage level. Um, those colors of maintenance in uh, AOA and GOA circlets are restricted on kingdom levels. Um, so this is a this is society level discussion. Um, so I know within Meridiers, uh, AOA and GOA and peerages have sort of there there's some colors of maintenance levels in there that allow different regalia for that. Uh, but that again that was very Meridiers specific, specific, so I didn't include it in this course. Uh, so check your local kingdom law and see what your colors of maintenance uh, restrictions are. Um, also, college bands are really weird and you're, that they're very, very late period. So a lot of people don't wear them. I'm actually, this is so uh, early period persona, early period Norris. I made this as sort of a mock collar maintenance uh, as a way for me to wear my, my all of my awards without having to have 30 different necklaces wearing. Um, yes, and, and that's another great point as we're going through this. Uh, Atlantia does not have sumptuary laws, but there are traditions. This is very important. It doesn't matter what your laws are. Look at your traditions too, um, because again, there's no heraldic police. Somebody's going to stop you from doing it, but you don't want to be that person that that wears the thing that you shouldn't be wearing because it makes you look like your thing you're not. Just be careful with that. All right. So, yep. So that covers the regalia. So again, this is regalia for peerages. You have your, your royal peers and your bestowed peers and regalia restricted to them. Um, you're going to see a lot of that repeated on the next slides uh, because the a lot of the regalia we have is also denoted as charges within heraldry. 
and likewise also restricted. Uh, and you guys are doing a great job uh, dropping comments. If you have questions or comments, please throw them up in the in the chat there. Um, I'll, I will make sure I, I'm sort of keeping an eye on that. Uh, oh, I saw that. I want to go back to. Uh, so we talked about white belts for uh, for knights, and I, and I mentioned that there are other belts, things that are that are traditionally reserved. Any of the red, yellow, or green belts or blue belts, also as I've seen as well, that are that are used for associates, um, none of those are restricted on a society level. Now, if your kingdom has chosen to restrict them, that's a whole different discussion. Um, and as some have, um, but by tradition, if you see a red belt or a yellow belt or a green belt, most of us are sort of agree what that means. Uh, so be careful with that as well. But it is not not re actually reserved regalia. And that's one of the things I want to make is that's what's reserved, what's not. All right. Now we're looking at reserved charges. So, uh, again, this should be fairly obvious for me taking a heraldic class, but for charges, I mean something, a, a thing on shield or on, on heraldry, right? So, a thing that goes on your shield. Um, there's a large list of charges here, uh, but there is a, uh, this, this is, these are the ones that are reserved for these various things. Hermes, Michael Hofton has a, uh, a rebel of his badge. Oh yeah, so yeah, yes, there, there's actually, um, um, I actually had an argument with somebody the other day about a yellow belt uh, reserved as a badge. And I was like, you no, know, that's not a thing. And I was like, but it actually is apparently. Um, there is a red yellow belt reserved as a badge for um, it's an award out of Atlantia, I think, maybe, Artemisia maybe, uh, one of the eight kingdoms. It's for the, it's, it's actually a yellow garter not a belt, and it's listed as a garter. So if you look at it as a belt, you won't find it. But it's a it's a it's a garter or um, for the specific award they have. So I thought that was interesting that that's actually a thing. Uh, it's just a yellow belt. So all right, so let's look at these reserved charges. So first, of all, we're going to start with um, once again. So we're starting looking at royal peer things first, uh, or sort of royal peers and augmentations first. Um, yes, they order the garland. Thank you for Pontalto. That is correct. Uh, and then, then there you go. There's the the circular red belt. So, two, so two of the red belts are actually reserved charges, or, or, or at least have been registered by those people. Um, so don't use them because they are registered. There you go. Thank you for that. All right. So a charged canton. So this is uh, and now this is not a charged canton, but on the top of the the left picture here. Uh, so that is a canton. The red square is a canton. Uh, this is often used uh, as an augmentation. So. Um, an augmentation is an award within society that you can get uh, as sort of a, a special thank you uh, from your crown. It's sort of the, it's not precedence bearing usually, but it's a it's a thing you add to your shield. Uh, in Meridias, we have our three stars, like the ones above me there, it's a, it's a three, three mullets. Um, that uh, it looks like one of our populace badges, so you use it also as the augmentation. Um, you you can put it on a, on a canton like this on your device to show that it is a separation. Um, now, this charge canton is also used for uh, denoting baronial uh, seat holders uh, within some kingdoms. So you would carry your regular arms on your shield and then have the baronial arms in canton. Uh, that's less common. Uh, I, I've seen it once or twice in the in, in 10 years or so, but it does pop up occasionally. Uh, so, but the, the any canton, you can have a canton, you can't have a charged canton. Uh, unless you're unless you bear an augmentation or using it for an augmentation. Now, any crown or coronet. Again, definition of crown and coronet may vary, but if it looks like a crown, and you might go, eh, is that a crown? Is that is that is that got something? Is, is, is that is that got royalty? It's probably a crown. Just just go with that. Um, so so crown and coronet is restrict, restricted to kingdoms and principalities. So their personal, the actual kingdom or principality armory. And the personal armor of any society level royal peers and core barons. So again, your dukes, your counts, your viscounts, and then your barons. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm using male terms on those. I apologize. Um, so th those, any royal peers of those levels. You, you okay? My cat's having a coughing fit, excuse me. Um, so on your device, if you're registering a, 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 a if you're trying to register register heraldry, don't try to use a coronet or a crown or anything. It looks like one if you're not of those stations. Um, generally, that's from from what I've seen that gets added after the fact. So if somebody has registered heraldry, they've been in the SC for a couple of years, 
they then become a royal peer or a court, uh, like a court baron or whatever, and they then re-register their heraldry, adding that coronet to it. There are other ways to use uh, a coronet if you are of those stations instead of putting in your heraldry that I think I actually like better. Again, that's a whole, it becomes a whole display class, but that's uh, uh, achievements are a much better use of that. Now, there's a multiply charged uh, single in, in a sketchin. Uh, so let me back up a couple words there. And a sketchin is the shield, is the, is the what we call the shield shape. Um, so in this, on the right hand side here, uh, so the in, inset a sketchin. So you actually can have a shield on your shield. Uh, and generally, the that is also used for augmentation or arms of pretense. Now, this is something you don't, I, I've never seen within the SCA, but it could be done uh, if you're generating some sort of royal lineage, uh, some sort of connection to somebody, I guess you can use it for. Uh, it is not as common. It was much more common in period, however. Uh, yes, shieldception. That's what we call that. That is shieldception. Because uh, that's actually, if you look at this, that's actually a shield on a shield with five little shields on it. That's technically because it's in a border on a shield. So that's like, that's super shieldception. Um, and, and I really wish those little white dots were shields too. I'm going to, I'm going to say they are, those little white dots are also shields. So it's like six layers of shields. Um, but that shield, shield within a shield is used for an augmentation or arms of pretense. Again, showing you, you are somebody of super importance or somebody that is connected to super importance. Um, Never seen the SCA, but it, it is something that is, happens in period where you'll have the shield on the shield. Um, and other than the stuff I mentioned earlier, okay, so I want to go back. So that is the actual only extra stuff that is added. So I didn't make new slides for all the reserve regalia went over a minute ago. So in, in, insert here, repeat of reserve regalia. Because all that reserve regalia we talked about earlier, the cap of maintenance, the pelican volning itself, the circular chain, the white belt, the white baldric are also considered reserve charges. So a circular chain can't be used unless you're a knight. A white belt can't be used unless you're a knight. A red belt can, a yellow belt can, a green belt can, a blue belt can, a black belt can. Uh, well, red and yellow can't because they're, they're already registered, but they're legally allowed to be. Um, but a white belt cannot and a white baldric cannot. Um, now, this also applies for a white garter or a white, um, if it looks like a belt, it's probably a belt. Um, you might be able to sneak it past, but I wouldn't try it. We are, the heralds are getting better. Um, and, and yes, uh, and that's a, uh, I was going to bring it up in just a second. The, the laurel wreath is a weird part of that um, because the laurels get to wear a wreath, and I'll bring that up for a uh, but cannot use it on their arms, uh, but they can wear, they can use it on their achievements and on their regalia. It's a really weird little point because in society, laurel wreaths are used for group. Uh, so any group within the society, uh, cantons, shires, baronies, kingdoms, principalities, use on their device as a laurel wreath. Um, so that is the you're right one exception. It is still like, considered a reserved charge and it's just reserved differently. Um, and that's something I wish we would fix. I don't, I, that, that is a personal I, pet peeve of mine. Thank you for bringing that up and having let me go on this little rant here. Um, I dislike that we have that, that that is both a re reserved thing for the laurels, but also reserved for groups. Unfortunately, 55 years, 56 years later, I doubt that it's not something that's going to change. So I'm just going to continue being grumpy about it, I guess. Tag team heraldry. Yeah, they, thank you for the folks who are chiming in here. Uh, I, I love teaching classes like that when you have people that are really involved. Uh, there, I know a lot of things. And I know what I can read, but I don't know all the things, and often I forget things. So I appreciate those of you that are chiming in with, with notes and comments. Um, helps all of us learn more. Oh, excuse me. All right. So we talked about reserved regalia. We've talked about reserved charges, and, we, and, and also the reserved regalia that is also reserved charges. Now, this next part is the restricted charges. So that's all the stuff that, that you can that you can do if you are somebody of some station, right? So you have some station, therefore you do the same. These next part are things that you cannot do ever. Um, now, this list is not all inclusive and this list will get updated as it needs to. Um, one of the things the Society Heralds have, been, have done, uh, especially here recently, 
is have been working to stay on top of new things that are that are bad, right? So these these are the bad things. This is the bad category of things of things you don't use. Now, there are a lot of rules in heraldry that we look at. There are a lot of things when we're looking at registering devices that are is that too the is it too modern? Does it look too much like the Scooby Doo logo? Does it is it oh that's clearly SpongeBob? Like look. We get it. We we see what you're trying to do. You're and sometimes we you can sneak it past, right? Be be cognizant of what you're doing and make it make sense, and you'll get the heralds will love it. If you just you know try to pass the 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 uh, you know the Scooby Doo logo, they're gonna go. All right, let's, this is the Scooby Doo logo, or, that, or that's clearly the Batman logo. Let's move on. Let's let's try not to do that, right? It's not specifically restricted, but they're probably gonna fuss at you. Uh, this list here is specifically restricted now. I want to note uh, previous ones I have shown pictures. Uh, I am not showing pictures for any of these. Uh, this is uh, some of these are things that that I don't even like talking about, but we're going to talk about them so that we can to discuss them. Here's the list in its completion. Um, now again, this list is not all encompassing, so please uh, and I'll, I'll link the link. I have the link at the end where this comes from. So continue check on that throughout. So this includes uh, bad things as well as also some some sort of common use things. So like the Red Cross, for instance. Uh, and it has the blazons for those a cross cooped ghouls on an argent background. Uh, so this is the international you know, red cross and it's actually protected by international treaty. Um, you also see things here that are like a crowned harp, a crowned rose, a crowned shamrock and a crowned thistle. So these are all royal things from very common things in period. Um, uh, the, the French and in, uh, in both ancient and modern flags you see listed there as well. Now, we also start going into things that are the bad things. Um, so your hand of glory, your hangman's noose, your uh, the gunsight cross, uh, any, any any swastika or swastika remnant things. Um, if it looks like a swastika and talks like a swastika, guess what, folks? It's probably a swastika, even if it's not. Now, I get it, and I hear I hear somebody out there going, "Yeah, but swastikas." You're right. Swastikas were not always bad. Swastikas were not, you know, as when speaking from a Buddhist background, you're absolutely correct. And dang it, if I ain't mad about it too. But um, it, we are where we are today, and that's what that's that's what the rule is. Because um, so don't don't try it. Don't even bother. Don't put it in your trim. Don't put it in your device. Don't bother. Um, now this also includes things like the papal cross, um, which is restricted to the Pope. Uh, the Red Hand of Ulster, which is for British barons, um, uh, or the Royal Dragon, which is specifically a four-toed Chinese dragon. Five-toed dragon, 17-toed dragon is fine. <sighs> but if you put a Chinese dragon on your thing, even if it only has four toes, you might still get, even if it has five toes or three toes, you might still get a crap about it because it looks too much like presumption. And again, that's that fine line there. Uh, and of course, you have things that are very common, like the Tudor Rose. Uh, which is specifically a rose argent and a rose ghouls. So I'd like to point out, because this, this comes up a lot, we're talking about things that are reserved or restricted. Not all roses are restricted. So a wreath of roses or a chaplet of roses are restricted. Um, and then you have a singular Tudor rose is restricted, which is the red and white rose. Or the crowned rose is restricted. Or outside of that, you have some options: uh, groups of roses, other colored roses. Fine. Oh, thank you, Michael. I, I'm colored or numbers are bad. The five toes is bad, not the four toes. So if you're do, if you're dragging us five toes, it's it's restricted. Four or three is not. But again, don't don't push that envelope. Don't bother. So yeah, roses are a thing. You can use roses. It is allowed. Um, you also can use things that are, you know, again, you could technically have a six-toed dragon. It's not restricted. Just be careful with that. Have I ranked enough about rest restricted things? I think I'm good. Okay, so again, check that list. If if, if you're if you're going, oh man, I really like this thing. Before you go too far, go check that list. Right now, most of us know when we see a, a thing. Look at that thing and go, huh, does that make me think of something? So the instant when I look at heraldry, I go, what is my first reaction? And if my first reaction is to think of, you know, the Red Cross, or isn't that the Pope, or does that look like Nazis? I'm going to go check. I'm going to go make sure it isn't Nazis. 
Um, so we actually had a thing come up here in Meridian, so a little a little anecdote for a second. Uh, we had an old Papa's badge that was um, we, it was it was a voided saltier. Um, anybody who's, who knows Meridian, it was, it was the, the, the what we call the stars and bars, um, which anybody who's from the south will, will hear that and go, "Oh, you're correct. That's what it looked like. It very much looked like the rebel flag." Um, that except it was black and white, but if anybody who lived in the South or, or sort of knew what that was went, oh yeah, maybe. Um, and we had a lot of folks that were, that were from out of Kingdom which saw it and went, do you mean to do that? Uh, and we finally talked about it and went, no, we really don't. Um, so we actually removed it. It was, uh, it was, it is no longer in use. It is still registered to the Kingdom because it's not going to get released. At least it hasn't been discussed to be released so that it doesn't get registered again. Um, so we are, but we are no longer using an Emirates as our badge because it, uh, especially for the last few years with things going on, it became too much in, in, voca- in, the, of, in invocative of negative connotations, um, and we did not want our kingdom bearing those negative connotations. So we, we chose to we chose to not use it anymore. Uh, but yes, it is still in the books, but it's not used anymore. So, so that, that, and that's a really great example of, of of how things evolve and change, right? So whereas today, uh, you know. I, X charge may not have a negative connotation. If tomorrow some, uh, you know, some bad person uses that charge or that symbol as their symbol and does some atrocity, you know, that then is the association. So whereas technically it's not, it's allowed. Like, do you want to be the guy that's carrying around that thing and that that person that, who did that bad thing also used? Um, you know. Now. We can look through history and find a whole lot of bad things that were associated with a whole lot of bad symbol or a whole lot of symbols. You're correct. Um, it goes back to if you look at the symbol, what is your gut reaction to it, right? And what is if you take a hundred people, what is most of their gut reaction to it? That's that's sort of how you judge that. Okay. All right. Now, shifting uh, gears a little bit. So we talked about reserved regalia. Talk about reserve charges, talk about restricted charges. Now, and so that's all stuff you can't do or can't do unless you're a certain person. Let's talk about conventional things. So within society, we also have what we call proper or conventional colors and postures. Um, so this is a little weird, and this is also a giant list. I did not include the entire list. Again, I'll link it there at the end. Um, but it's the SCA, yeah, heraldry.sca.org, COA gloss. Uh, it's the College of Arms glossary. Um, it is table four and it has all the conventional proper rings and table five has all the, the default, default postures. So what this means is if you look at a thing and say, okay, it's a bear. If I just say a bear proper. What does that mean? Or if I say an abacus by default, an abacus has a certain position, certain things you have to say. So if it is an abacus, you know, this way versus an abacus this way. Or it's a sword. If I just say a sword, what's the default position for a sword? Okay, well, generally we think, no, it's a sword. It's I'm I'm holding it, played up, right? That makes sense. Or a bear is like this. It's always a bear rampant. It's probably going to be default for it. So there's a giant list of this. What this does is allows us to have slightly less long blazons and allows us to say a thing proper. Or we know if we say a peacock or bread or a zebra, it looks like this. Right, it gives us this sort of a starting point. You can then modify that thing uh, further, but it has to start somewhere. So this is conventional colors and postures. Some color examples. All right, so uh, so these are the proper colors for these things. Can you have purple antlers? Yes, yes you can. By default, by proper, they are white or light yellowish brown. Huh. But cow barter, brown is not a heraldic color. Haha, yes, yes, my friends, it is though, if you were doing something proper. So this is the way to get things brown or wood or those sort of tan or human, you know, it's like, it's like skin colors. Um, there are ways to do that by calling them proper. Um, it's a weird thing. It's the only way you can do browns. Um, generally, in, her- in heraldry or tans or so, those off colors that are not the heraldic proper colors. Um, so, an antler or ivory, uh, so any kind of bone like that, is generally going to be a beige, yellowish brown color. Uh, bread, so a loaf of bread, is by default brown. 
uh, lavender flowers. Uh, so, so lavender has one, uh, like other, there's a group of flowers that have them. So lavender is purple flowers and it's leaved and stemmed in green. Uh, and I've, I've, I've translated these all to, uh, to the, uh, to English to, to common and not the Latinized, uh, heraldic colors just for ease of use here. Uh, parchments or any, any kind of a, a paper, uh, a roll of parchment, a scroll, anything that was in that parchment family is tan or yellow. Uh, a peacock, so this is a, again, a peacock proper, right? So if, if it is defined as a peacock proper, it would be mostly blue and green with the, with, with the, in its tail would have its eyes in it. Now there's also a posture that's separate from this. So that's a peacock proper rampant would look one way. A peacock proper passant would look another way. Um, but a peacock proper would be it's a peacock displayed in these colorations. So you have both the the posture and the color have their proper forms. And of course, a, a zebra is a uh, white and strapped stri uh, white striped black horse. So it's a it's a white horse with black stripes, not a black horse with white stripes. Not that you probably tell a whole lot of difference in heraldry with that, but it you know uh, it actually does matter where the striping starts. It's actually kind of funny. Uh, and correct, say a, a, a note from uh, at the end there. Uh, there are lots of items that have a proper color today that didn't have proper color period. So this this proper coloration, and let me actually sort of back up for that. These rules here, all the rules we talked about today are our society rules. And some of them are based on heraldry, like on, on period-based heraldry. A lot of them are sort of like, it's it's our rules we've adjusted for us. Um, but yes, carrots and pumpkins in period were much more varied color than orange. Uh, but a carrot proper, a pumpkin proper would both be orange today. Thank you for that, Etienne. All right. So some position examples. So if I say a cup, it is pale-wise, so up and down, with its mouth the chief. Um, an eagle is going to be displayed, so it's, you know, wings out, feet out. A hoe, the, the garden tool, uh, is pale-wise, so uh, running up and down, with its blade to bottom. So this is a, so cups are up, uh, blades are down. Um, a mountain is going to be issuant from base, so it means it's, it actually is going to be uh, touching the bottom and looking like it's coming out of the bottom of the shield, as opposed to being a fully, um, you know, thing on the thing, or, or, or fully a, a sort of a compassing chart on the, on the shield itself. Uh, a ship is fess-wise, bow to dexter. So fess-wise running across with a bow facing, uh, in this case, dexter, right. Uh, a squirrel is always sedgent erect, so it's sitting with its little little feet up. Uh, and then a wreath, any wreath, a rose wreath, a laurel wreath, a, 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 a wreath of, I don't know, I pick a wreath. Uh, it is always circular in, in shape, and it is with the tips of two branches nearly touching at the top. Now, again, this is the proper. You could change that. You could turn turn the wreath this way, turn the wreath that way, upside down, change, whatever. You can change these things as long as they, but if you say a wreath or a laurel wreath or a um, you know, uh, 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 if you just say a squirrel, it's going to be in that position. Um, so there's a question about is natural another way to say that? Yeah. So uh, natural is another way to do that. Um, I think. Don't quote me on this. I'm, I'm pretty sure the I think the blazons are are doing proper now versus natural. Uh, but yeah, that that's the idea. Is it, it's, it's the dolphin natural or a dolphin proper. Um, so, whereas that would be correct, um, but I, I think getting proper is the only way to do it. At the end of point there, uh, natural does not, doesn't have to do with coloration. It's different between a fantastical version uh, versus the animal we've seen in the real world. Thank you for that. There you go. Uh, so it, it's a it's a the natural squirrel versus a you know Celtic knotted squirrel. I guess maybe a difference there. So but yeah, so proper coloration, proper posture, or default posture rather, and then. You have your natural version of it. Um, I, I, have, I haven't seen a chart for natural because I guess it by default is the heraldically common one would be the natural for that. All right. This lasted 46 minutes. I'm surprised. I, was, I thought I'd be done in 15. So cool for that. Any questions? 
that's, that's, what, that's, that's all I've got. That's, that's what I've got to cover today. Uh, again, this is more of a reference of these things exist. Uh, this is not an all-encompassing co- class on all these things. These is more of a these charts exist and go use them. Um, speaking of these charts existing, let's look at that real quick. So references, SCA Inc. College of Arms Glossary of Terms uh, can be found at heraldry.sca.org slash coagloss.html. If you just go to heraldry.sca.org and bookmark that bad boy, uh, that is your your one-stop shop for all things heraldry. Um, there are rules and articles and just amazing information out there. Uh, start there. Uh, make sure you go out and look at that. Uh, but this this is linked in specifically in the glossary of our, or the glossary of terms, um, which was a weird spot for me to find it initially. Uh, and I actually had trouble finding it again when I went back looking for it because um, you think to look in the rules um, or in some of the rule section, but it's actually in the glossary of terms, um, which is under the rules, so it's in the, at least in the right spot. And there's also uh, talking about other charts out there. There's also a list of alternate titles. Uh, there's also the standards for evaluation out there. So if you're a new Herald watching this, please go bookmark that site and, and sort of look through that. Um, there's also some really great articles and archives out there just for a ton of information available. That up. Um, and to plug a little bit uh, of me real fast, uh, make sure you like this video. Subscribe to my channel here on Kyle Burr's Corner. Uh, Calvary's Corner is a bit of a passion project of mine uh, that I started back in the pandemic started. It's, it's what happens when a uh, uh, an extrovert loses his job and his hobby in the same month. Uh, but we do a lot of fun stuff here. So bookmark, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, look us up on Facebook, Facebook facebook.com backslash Calvary's Corner. Or if you'd like to support everything we're doing here on Calvary's Corner and KK Productions and the like nine or ten other channels that we support, actually, uh, feel free to do that. Looking us up on Patreon, patreon.com backslash KK Productions. Um, some great rewards out there, and you can join my Grand Wall of Patrons. Grand Wall of Patrons! There you go. Stop that screen share for a second. Um, yes, even if, yeah, there you go. Yes, even if you're a seasoned hero, go bookmark it. Go bookmark that site. It is, it's a good one to have on hand. Uh, and then, yes, click on the Rules button, and you'll find it listed. You'll find the rules listed there. There's a glossary of terms in there. Um, so go go snag that. It's a super useful site to have. Um, and it's where and it's where so it's where I always start. Uh, is if I have a question about something, I go do there to look first uh, before I go digging very much further. Uh, let's see what else. So again, uh, so we're so to, I want to thank the Atlanta University again for having me out. Uh, I'll be back here again at uh, at noon my time, uh, one o'clock Eastern Standard Time for d- devices and badges. What are they? Uh, if you'd like to see more heraldry topics coming up, uh, actually, I, as, as I mentioned earlier, I'm the Dean of Heraldic Studies for Royal University of Meridies. We'll be having our next session, uh, July 14th. Uh, so look at the Kingdom of Meridies University or Kingdom of Meridies page on Facebook for that information. Uh, it'll be getting posted here really soon. Um, and if you'd like to teach a class on heraldry, reach out to me, uh, lantern at meridies.org. Uh, or again, pay attention to that site. We'll have a, there's a uh, sign up sheet out there as well. Any, uh, any last questions? Anything? We'll call. We'll give you guys a. We'll give you guys a few minutes to go next between your next uh, classes here. Awesome. If you have any questions, again, feel free to follow me. I can be reached. Uh, here, I'll throw my contact back up on the screen. Uh, nope, I won't actually. There we go. So lantern at meridies uh, or feel free to comment on this video uh, or message me through the Facebook page Calbarter's Corner. Calbarter's Corner. Awesome. I want you all to have a great day. Enjoy the rest of Atlantean University. And thank you for joining me. Uh, I have been Cal Barter. This has been Cal Barter's Corner. Thanks, everybody.